That is uh, Jake Clemens with the Jake Clemens Band. Yeah, that's my group. It is great to have you. <laughs> Jake Clemens is a musician, singer, songwriter, and uh, he's got a new CD out. It is called Fear and Love. How you doing? I'm doing great. I'm what doing did you just well. come in from, you told me? Uh, yeah, I just flew in from Montreal. All and right. boy, are my arms tired. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> that was lame. Get out of here. Uh, you grew up loving music because? It's been in my family for, I don't know, centuries, I guess. It's, uh, it's the first language I spoke as a kid. So. How young? Uh, my dad was the Marine Corps band director. Um, you know, my, all of my relatives sing in the church choirs. So, uh, I mean, from birth, I suppose. Handsome blue tie there. Oh, that's you. Oh, that you always me. had it together. You know, trying to keep it, you know. Love it. Love it. <laughs> um, and Clarence Clemens, your uncle. That's right. Um, introduced you to... There he is, the big man. Introduce yeah. you to, did he introduce you to saxophone? Yes, he did, um, and maybe inadvertently. Uh, I don't know, I mean, I should say, I was familiar with the saxophone because of my dad's marching band career, but uh, I didn't really understand, uh, I guess, what the saxophone could mean until I saw Clarence play it. Uh, yeah, 1988. So it's interesting, You. is it fair to say, Jake, that they really, was no other direction you were going to wind up going in other than music? Yeah, I say that's definitely fair to say. <laughs> I can say it's fair to say that because I tried a lot of other, other things. What else? Jeez, man. A lot of other things. Um, I don't know. Music always felt like the most natural and, and the key always came easy to me. It was the way I expressed myself. What so it didn't easy? really... I don't know. Uh, it's how I translated my life since I was a, a, a young kid. So it liked speaking. Easy like speaking, you know? It's interesting. Uh, but a lot of instruments here because we see you coming in, in the clip that we see, you know, you're playing a guitar, mm -hmm. see you playing a piano. I've, I've seen you live. Yeah. Right? Playing sax. So how many different instruments are we talking about? Um, I, I don't know. I mean, I, I, my dad started me on piano. Uh, I told him I wanted to play saxophone and, uh, and he did the very dad thing and said, uh, okay. Yeah. Play piano for a few years first, and then you can go to saxophone. And uh, classically, I was very uh, upset about that decision. <laughs> but I wanted to play sax, so I, I played piano for a few years and was classically trained there. And then was allowed to move to saxophone, and um, yeah, got in my early 20s and figured I should probably learn guitar and you know whatever. Picked up clarinet and drums and whatever else. Do you mind seeing yourself playing sax with the band? Yeah, no. Can we I, check it out? Sure. Let's go. <laughs> check it out. What's it like being the main guy? Uh, I don't really think of it that way, you know? It's, uh, I'm, I was watching the clip and thinking, uh, reminding myself of how lucky I am to have such phenomenal musicians with me, you know? Your colleagues. Yeah, Your yeah, they're incredible. Mates. And, uh, yeah, so I mean, I guess I'm navigating the experience, but, um, you know, it's, it's without question a group effort, you know? And everybody is equally putting forth uh, an important amount of energy to make the experience complete. That is true. Just like uh, in this operation, there are so many people who you don't get to see who are yeah. such an, people in my ear, people who make this studio look the way it does, the, the people on lighting, production, extraordinary people. Absolutely. And so I appreciate that. But you also have the experience with the E Street Band. Yeah. So, so can we talk? Yeah, yeah, for sure. <clears throat> the guy who leads the E Street Band, he's had a relatively decent career. <clears throat> Um, yeah, that guy. <laughs> First met him when? 
uh, I don't know, maybe I was two. I Get guess. out of here. Something like that. You were a kid, kid. Yeah, yeah. A little baby. Yeah, he, he, Clarence was my dad's brother, but when I was a kid, it was Uncle Bruce, you know? Uncle Steve. Right that's there. Uncle Gary. That's, that's how so I was. So Steve and Zan. It was <laughs> the guy, and, and, and Max is right there. Yeah, yeah. Max was on our show, too. So, um, <clears throat> when, when Clarence um, tragically passes, is it clear to you or when is it clear to you that there's an opportunity, I hate even describing it like that, but that, that there's a, a chance that you will be a part of this? How does that happen? Uh, it was not clear to me. And uh, um, I don't know, it has to happen naturally. You know, that's the kind of thing where, um, you know, Clarence was such a significant figure to um, anyone he was in front of. Uh, I don't know, that it had to be incredibly delicate and natural, you know? So, um, I guess when it became apparent to me that it would be something that I would, uh, a role I would need to fulfill, uh, it came out of the sense of, of healing for myself and healing for the millions of other people that he had impacted. What kind of pressure was that on you? Because you're healing on a personal human level because of your, I can't even imagine the relationship you had with mm -hmm. him. Personally, but then the expectation, whatever expectation you put on yourself, I don't know that either. But for those fans and those who love Clarence and his role in the band, mm -hmm. how did you see yourself there? Did you say to yourself, I'm just going to be myself and that's it? Or did you feel that? I think it was a reflection of my relationship with Clarence, you know? Um, I didn't feel that immense amount of pressure, per se. Um, Clarence was like a father figure to me and, uh, and like a brother, you know, like we were in, intensely close. Um, so he'd been speaking to me for years about stepping into that role. Really? Yeah, and I told him it was ridiculous. Like, you know, like for me, he was like Santa Claus, you know, like he's not gonna go away. I'd seen him go through so many different surgeries and procedures and always come out on the other side. I, I jokingly called him the $6 billion man, you know, considering inflation. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> but, um, you know, so for me, he was never gonna go anywhere. Um, but it did certainly, you know, I guess, ease that mental process for me that knowing he had spoken to me about it and maybe prepared me for it yeah. even before he passed. Final question before I come back to your band. Um, auditioning, interesting. Challenging for you in spite of everything you just said. Yeah, it was a weird process, I suppose, you know? Bruce Tough, easy what? <laughs> Well, the funny thing is, out of you? well, you know, the thing is, uh, Bruce talked about it from his perspective recently. Yeah, I know we've read. Book. Yeah, so uh, the, I was going to leave it alone. No, it's fine. Uh, the funny thing is, is leading up to that point, um, I guess Bruce was looking at it from an audition point of view, and I was looking at it from a, um, a we're figuring out what's going to be next and what's appropriate, you know, kind of thing. There's so much going on at that time. Um, Again, just dealing with the massive loss of a cornerstone that way. Uh, personally? Yeah, personally. <laughs> and, and, and to some extent, I, I, I can't imagine what was going on for Bruce. And he's like, look, at least the way I, when I, from what I read that he, yeah. that he said publicly was, we have a role to fill, you have a responsibility. And his perception was, you need to be at a certain place. And there wasn't a whole lot of talk about your emotional needs. Right. Right. At least that's my interpretation. Oh, and that's the thing. That leading up to that day, um, we've been getting together because, as far as I was concerned, we both lost a cornerstone, you know, and um, and we had uh, a lot of good talks just around that, you know. What's about, it like being with the band? It's incredible. I mean, because you're great. It's, oh, thank I mean, you. It's just, what's it like for you? Um, I mean, I grew up watching this band, you know. Like I'm the luckiest guy up there because I've. I've been a fan, and I'm the only one who's been able to see them play. <laughs> like, yeah. they've never been to an E Street show. So, for me, it's like it's it's great because I, I I've seen the band play, and, and and I've had the experience from a fan's perspective for so long, and uh, and so now like being being a part of that and going to what I call you know like rock and roll university. That's right. Every time that we're together and being able to take that 
you know, experience and apply it to my own experience and what I'm able to hopefully escort into the, you know, this next generation of rock and roll uh, is exciting. So talk about this, Fear and Love. How many uh, songs are we gonna hear on this? How many you got? 11, I think. 11. <laughs> what makes this special? Um, it's a really personal record for me, you know? It's a, it's a very like, introspective record. It's uh, dealing with you know, reconciling hard relationships and, and, um, and, and dealing with our fear. You know? The record's called Fear and Love and it's basically based around the concept that at the most fundamental level, all of our, all of our decisions are, are, are rooted in, in either fear or they're rooted in love. You know, to, so to question, like, you know, why am I here? Why am I doing this? Is it because I, because, is it because of love or is it because I'm afraid for some reason? Um, and, uh, yeah, I made a lot of personal breakthroughs along those lines over the last few years. And, uh, and they came out in song. So we put a record together. How much you love to write? I love to, I love to write. It's, and uh, perform. Yeah, you know, they're two completely different things. Particularly performing your own stuff, very different. Yeah. Um, but the experience is very similar to like what I get out of an E Street show. Um, like I said, that's what I grew up understanding. So what I hope to del deliver when my band plays is is very similar to that. Um, it's about a community uh, coming together. It's about a uh, um, I don't know a connected moment with everyone in the room, and it's isolated into the you know that that nanosecond uh, into the next one. Let me just say this to you. For all of us who uh, appreciate music, appreciate uh, the E Street Band, <clears throat> and have seen you <clears throat> and saw Clarence, uh, you bring a lot of joy to a lot of people. And I wish you nothing but the best. And I know I speak for a lot of folks in the public broadcasting world. And we wish you all the best as you continue to create great music oh, and bring joy to other people. The CD is called uh, Fear and Love, Jake Clemens. Wish you all the best. Thanks so much. Thanks, partner. I really appreciate it. Stay right there. We'll be right back right after this. One on One with Steve Adubato has been a production of the Caucus Educational Corporation, celebrating over 25 years of broadcast excellence. This special edition of One on One with Steve Adubato is brought to you from the Tisch WNET studios at Lincoln Center. Funding has been provided by RWJ Barnabas Health. Delta Dental of New Jersey, Wells Fargo, Bergen Community College, PSE&G, JAG Physical Therapy, and by New Jersey Sharing Network. Transportation provided by Airbrook Limousine, serving the metropolitan New York, New Jersey area.